Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Sorry about the lack of content lately. I've started a new job and believe it or not, I was there for three weeks before I got promoted. So I'm now a head chef, which means my spare time has now been limited for the time being. Hopefully that's gonna improve. Um, but until then, I've got to try and make the best of my red days off, which it seems a very good occasion. So um, I'm going to be stripping the car out today, getting it ready for the show season. Of course, with the amount of limited days off I've now got coming up, down to obviously work and other commitments, I've got to make the best of the situation I'm in. Obvious reasons, being promoted means I've got more money coming in, but sadly it does mean I have less spare time. So car parts are racking up at a rate of knots at the household. So today I'm gonna to start on the interior for this year's show season. I'm joining my friend Jordan, who's gonna be helping me. And today we are gonna go about, I wouldn't, would we call it a boot build? I don't know. Yeah, yeah you would call it a boot build? I, I, I don't know what we're gonna call it. Well, the plan of action for today is, I bought a rear seat delete off of a guy on Facebook. Yes, I know you're saying, why did you not make your own? Why did you buy one? Well, the true matter of the fact is, I don't have time. It, that is the damn honest reason. I could go about making it, but it could take me days, weeks, just time I don't have. It would be a lot easier if I just went out and bought one. So that is exactly what I did. And my plan of action is getting it fitted in, making room for the strut brace. This sub here is going, and I'm gonna install another sub onto the floor. It just seems such a, sh there's nothing wrong with that sub whatsoever. It just seems such a shame to split it from its box and sink it down because it is a good sub. I might want to use it somewhere else at a later date. So hence why I did go out and I bought the JBL 1100 GT512. I know nothing about subs. It seemed good. So I bought it. Um, I'm pretty sure it was off the back of a lorry because it was too cheap to be true. But I don't care. Anyway, um, that was what eBay does to you. Uh, so we're going to crack on now. And we're going to go about stripping these seats out. And probably, yeah, we'll just go from there. Very luckily, last summer, my friend Mark helped me wire in the subs. Uh, we just done an RCA converter into the rear speaker. So it's all wired in, so I haven't got to worry too much about that. It's literally just a case of switching and swapping subs out this time. This one here, I did Velcro it down to the floor so it wouldn't roll around in the boot. But it's just on a quick release system here, so it's, that's it. literally it. And that's the sub out. All right, now it's just a simple case of removing the carpet. I'm guessing, I don't know, I'm just making this up as I go along here. You can see where my uh, amp is all plugged in down there. Luckily, I've got a bit of a template when it comes to chopping out in a minute of where the... Uh, strut brace goes but that's a very rough template it looks like i went out that with a stanley knife probably did oh well so that's that sorted out and that's that out of the way but yeah you can see i'm running the vibe slick amp it probably came with i don't know with the actual sub that it was with but we'll make that work in the jbl i'm obviously going to be using the plan of action is to sink the sub into there and then using the tire well itself, and hopefully that's, well, good enough to be working as a sub box itself. But there's only one way to find out. Worst case scenario is I'll make a little plywood up sub box up at a later date. But we'll soon see. Right, anyway, let's get this one This is bloody, oh, ow. But, <laughs> wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> I'm essentially turning my car into a van. <laughs> oh. What are you doing in here? Alright. I sat and plugged and that's good. I hope this is right, otherwise I've just broken something. I don't know. Oh, there we go. He's off there. Yeah, I want to hear then. It's held on somewhere, yeah? It's hard to tell if it's on a screw or a hinge. 
rubbish. Right, it's to worry about the seat in a minute. <laughs> Let's take the strut brace out. Right, to get the strut brace out, we're going to have to remove... Might as well just go from the seats up. So we need a torch split. Yeah, I can work. Adapter for my impact. Is that the right size? It's caught in the middle there. Let's see if you can put your eyes through, see if you can see anything. You see anything? I just see a click here. Oh, I see where it's in. There's a little bolt back here on the bracket. Yeah, in the middle. Ah, right, okay. So we strip that down. When I've worked out what size it is, it should just fly out. I think it's a Torx 50. Yeah, I'll get my adapter. I am normally a bit more organised than this, but today is like a rush against time. I want to get this thing out and done. So we're just going to probably go to a bit of a fast motion now, just crack on with it. So I'll catch you all when all these seats are out. Alright, so as you can see, We've taken the seat belts out of the rear that were burning behind here. We had to remove a lot of this plastic. If you watched a previous video, you would have seen me spray it up as I attempted to start on some sort of boot build. But it's held up all right. Some of the texture has come through. I would be lying if I said it was perfect. It's not. But anyway, um, it all went rather well. The, as you saw, I did get it out in the end. The uh, bench part of it did lift up but there was a hook at the back that I didn't quite see. Um, in here when it came to taking these seats out once you've removed all the bolts from what you can see there is, I don't know how well Jordan can zoom in here, two plastic clips one on each side here that were an absolute pig we thought we were gonna have to take out all of this as you can hear it's loose well, we're gonna have to put that all back together in a minute so that's what we're going to be doing next, is putting all the plastic trim back in and back into place. We're going to clean it up because, of course, as we all know, dirt is weight. Um, but we are going to have to, obviously, um, I can see the floor through all the screw holes here, which is not what I was hoping to see. So I think I'm going to have to put all the uh, bolts back in regardless that the seat that came out of the seats so if any of you guys have done that please double check um, that you've put something in place even if it's just a sticker because you don't really want water coming through into your uh, back of your car especially around winter time so yeah if you haven't done that i suggest you get out and do that um, but yeah we're going to put the bolts back in the floor now we're going to put the plastics back up um, and then we're just going to get it ready and I'll catch you all in the next part. Alright guys, so you can see now all the plastics are back in, all the seat belts have been removed, all the rear seats are behind back here. I'll tell you what, there is some serious weight there, but obviously I've not got the equipment here to weigh it. But I will be making up for it for obvious reasons with the sub going in and other bits and bobs. I do have a racing fire extinguisher at home, which I'm going to put behind the um, middle armrest there on the back of the flat deck because, yeah, it may be, you know, it's, it's going to be on show. It's obvious reasons. But if someone's car was to, say, accidentally go up, mine or anyone else's, you know, it would just come in handy to potentially save someone's pride and joy. Plus, I know that on some tracks, it's a requirement to have one. And if I do attend a show there and I just want to do a lap, I've got it there. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go over now and open up this parcel that I received. The box came rather battered, I'm not gonna lie. You know what Hermes parcels are like. But the interior's all been cleaned up. We can probably get away with losing the rear mats now, so they can come out. That's a little bit more weight. I know it's only grams, but it all adds up. But no. Here it is. What I ordered. Let's 
see what he's like. I'm afraid that he's half decent. It's a shame he's going to get chopped up in a minute. But I did politely ask the guy um, whether or not he could already pre-cut the holes for me. But he said he'd not used a strut brace like I've got before. He's only used done it for like show cages. So I'm afraid that was a no. So I'm going to take this out of the packaging now. And from what I can tell, it's literally just going to be a case of slapping it in place. Okay, so we've test fitted the floor. Believe it or not, you don't go in through the boot with it. I know, I, th I thought that. I was just there like, wasn't fitting, was it? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the easiest way to do it is literally seats forward and push it over, but be careful that it doesn't get caught on the hooks when you, um, from where your rear bench was. Because, yeah. Um, there is also, I don't know where I put it, but there, here it is, a little block that the guy provides. I will remember his name in a minute. I'm terrible with names. And um, it just goes in between the pillar of your armrest and the floor just stops it sliding forward, which is a bloody good idea, to be fair. Um, but now, basically, my next step, what I'm going to do now is take it out again. It's had its test fit. As you can see yourself, if I wasn't going to do anything to it, that looks quite smart. And as technically, as I said earlier, turn my car into a van. Um, I'm going to flip it over, take it out, flip it over from where I've got my original mat. Yeah, there's like a filthy as hell. Um, I'm going to flip it over, as I say, measure it against this. Draw around it, get a saw out, cut the holes needed. Because this is slightly thicker than that carpet, I'm going to have to go slightly bigger on the holes, just so that there's enough room for the strut brace to go up and over. And then I'll use this carpet then as a template to see if I can get the sub in the correct place, because I'd rather chop up this old crappy bit of carpet and this new floor and get that wrong and then wreck the new floor, if you know what I mean. So that's the plan of action there. So all in all, we're going to go and get the carpet out now. And we're going to measure it up, as I stated, where the strut brace goes over. And we're going to start chopping and pray that we can keep it nice and neat. I've got a little bit of a spray black paint at the end of the room if it does show the wood underneath. So I'm just like blend it in. But hopefully it's not too bad. Hopefully the strut brace does its thing. So we're going to get on with that. I'll catch you guys after we got this and hopefully the next bit you'll see is the finished article in the boot. So I've told you now what we're doing, let's get going. very quickly I've made a hole in here after measuring it seven and a half inches back by 15 inches across yes I used inches because I couldn't read the other side of the tape measure it was old um, but, so yeah and the sub fits nicely in there if you come over where is it you know it's, I've taken my spare wheel and I've cut a rectangle out of it if you're wondering why I've done that is because, well, I've got a bit of a plan. When we were testing the sub earlier, um, it was making the amp jump around. So what I've done is, I've because I want it hidden and underneath, I've taken that chunk of foam, put it to the bottom of that, and I'm going to cable tie it down to where your rear wheel spacer gets bolted onto. So I'm going to trim up these cable ties and put it on there. And then the sub's going to sink in there. So it should stop, in theory, the vibration of it rattling around in there. Because I had to adjust the sides on the actual um, rear seat delete itself, uh, it showed a bit of the light blue underneath. So I've just quickly gone over with a spray can. 
with some gloss black, which should help camouflage it in. I know it's a quick, cheap way, but it does the job and it should keep it looking smart. It's just now down to fitting it all. And then, yeah, just basically going from there. So then guys, the sub's installed, the strut brace is installed after some cutting and jiggery pokery. It's all in there. I like to think that that's a nice, smart, clean build, nothing too dramatic going on. I've got a little fire extinguisher to go in. Like I said, I'm gonna put it just behind the armrest at the top up there. But I have left the deck open for potential future adjustment. Say if I was to go down the air ride route, I've got room for it. Or if I wanted to go full sound system build, I've got room for it. Or even if I just wanted to keep it nice and clean. So I don't know, you know, it can be used for transporting goods. And I've got the choice there. I might even sleep on it at some car shows. You don't know, do you? The options are endless now. So I'd just like to say, give this video a big thumbs up if you like what you see here today. I know it's nothing too dramatic but it is certainly an improvement on just seeing the hideous back seats that, let's face it, nobody sat in. They were just sat there, a waste of time. They weighed and, you know, they were in weight that was unnecessary. So yeah, hit that thumbs up if you like what you see today. I hope that you generally have enjoyed this video. If you do have any boot builds of your own going on in your Fiestas, look me up on Instagram. I put my tag at the end, send some photos over. I'd love to see what you guys are creating yourselves. And I just, like I keep saying, cheers for watching guys. I'll catch you all soon.